Hi guys, welcome to Q&A Live. I'm your social media presenter, Megan, and I'm joined by our physical sciences teacher, chemistry buff, and Phil. How are you, Phil? I'm great, thanks to you, Megan. Fantastic. How are you? Um, my voice is a bit terrible. Oh, I have no. a bit of a cold, but I'm here. So okay. excuse my voice, mind it is. And I really like your shirt. I'm thanks really, so much. I'm, I'm quite really attached to it. <laughs> it, it. It follows me many places. Uh, people in the shops look at me a little bit strange. That's oh, okay. You yeah. are you. So you just do you. What are we doing today? Uh, we're taking a look at a little bit of organic chemistry. We're going to be uh, naming them. We're going to look at some functional groups. And cool. uh, hopefully we're going to figure out something cool. So uh, awesome. tonight's show is a little bit different. If you guys Tell queued them, in... Yeah. If you guys queued in last week, um, guys, we're going to play a live game show. So That's really cool. If you want to interact with your TV show, uh, get your smartphone or tablet device. Mm -hmm. And uh, there might even be a little bit of a prize of some airtime. Awesome. Might yeah, be amazing. That would be awesome. Awesome, guys. If you want to find out where we are, it's on Facebook. So you just go facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And that, or you can use the hashtag Q and a live. Please get your friends to like the page, promote the page. And you never know, we could give giving away secret prizes. If you like the page, give it to your friends, tell your friends. If, if it helps you, help your friends learn, guys. That's the only way we're ever going to learn together. So we're doing a really cool element to the element, get me. Hi. There we go. We're doing a really cool element to this show, and I hope you guys stay tuned. You want to start it off? Absolutely. Great. Okay. Um, so, guys, you guys sent us some amazing questions. Um, some of them are sort of like very foundational, and you guys were kind of asking these like a really sort of you, you might think they're basic questions, but guys, organic chemistry sometimes can be really, really tough. So even if you know what you're doing and you think you're an absolute boss at organic chemistry, let's see what we already know and kind of go, hmm, I got that, no problem. Guys, that, that little quiz section of the show, we're going to get kicked off at around about 25 past 6. We're going to see if you guys really know what you're talking about. But to make sure that you do know what you're talking about, let's take some questions. Okay, so Candace has sent in a beautiful question just to get us off the ground. So when we're starting to name organic chemistry, um, it's very important that we've got some of the language right. And the language, let's be honest, is a little bit tricky. Now, last week I gave you a little bit of outdated information. I told you that there were like 35 million organic chemicals. Okay, what's, what's it now? Well, at last count, it was around about 75 million oh, wow. organic chemicals. Okay, awesome. So, um, <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, my parents can't even remember, you know, me and my two brothers' names. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. used to just be called, like, number three. Number three. That's number three. good enough. It, it works. But <laughs> just like my parents, scientists had to figure out a way to name all the organic chemicals. Um, you know, 75 million chemicals, a little bit tricky. So I don't know how good your memory is for names, but mine's not so hot. Um, so now the, the, there's some words, some basic words that we need to, to familiarize ourselves with and just make sure that we know what those are before we can name like 75 million compounds. That's a lot. Okay, so some of the basic stuff. Back to grade 10. Now uh, it says an empirical formula, a molecular formula, and a structural formula. What is the difference between these three and a condensed formula? Structural formula. Oh my word. There's just so many different words and they all sound like formula, 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 formula. So what I've decided to do is I think the best way to answer Candace's question is actually to show and guys, I've said this before. I said it last week and I'll say it again. Organic chemistry is something that you do. It's not something that you watch. Uh, you might feel really smart watching us on TV, but guys, uh, you get to the end of the show. You maybe have some dinner. You watch your favorite series, which hopefully is more mindset. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you will forget everything you just listened to. And you think, no, 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 no. Well, I've got this. I remember everything. Guys, I know what it's like to be like 17, 18. You're like, mm, don't worry, I've got this. You will forget. Write it down, practice it with me. So, pens and paper. Okay, so empirical formula, molecular formula, structural formula, and condensed structural formula. Well, first of all, organic chemistry is usually done in structural formula. So, that's the one that I'm going to start out with. So we're going to deal with the structural formula of a compound first. The first one I'm going to write down is going to be two carbons. And then you'll notice that every carbon has got to have four bonds. And each hydrogen has got to have one bond. Now, this is a structural formula because it shows me the structure of the organic compound. Now, these are very useful because they help me name things because they can tell me that the longest carbon chain is two carbons long. There's six hydrogens around them. I can name this as ethane if you were watching us last week. One, two carbons gets us eth. Single bonds gets us ane. 
The hydrogens themselves, because it's part of a hydrocarbon, we don't actually have to name the hydrogens. That's the beauty of the IUPAC naming system. So this is some ethane, and this is called a structural formula. Okay, now, structural formulas contain a lot of information, but here's the problem with structural formulae, and I'm sure that you guys will agree. Writing out bonds in hydrogens is really time-consuming. If I want to write out ethane in a really short format, um, I can. The really cool thing about this is I can condense the structural formula. I can write it, shrink, shrink it all down. Everybody that does organic chemistry properly knows that carbon can do four bonds, hydrogen needs one. And if I write that without the bonds, those bonds are assumed. So what we're going to do is we're going to condense, which means to make smaller, the structural formula. So what I do, and this is how you start it out. You write the carbon and then what is joined to it. So here's what that means. So I'm going to write the first carbon and then what is joined to it. What is joined is three hydrogens. That's really cool. And then a carbon and three hydrogens joined to it. Now this is condensed. So that is a condensed structural formula. Uh, now condensed structural formulae can be uh, in, in various different ways and different textbooks have different ways of explaining this. Okay, so there's a condensed structural formula. Now, that is not to be confused with a molecular formula. Now, molecular formulae are the thing that everyone first knows when you start to write out chemical formulae. Um, when I first started uh, writing chemical formulae, it, it was really quite exciting because basically a molecular formula is the recipe to make anything that you want. Really cool. So if you've got like these 100 plus elements, you can make anything as long as you follow the molecular formula. Unfortunately, my hopes were dashed and I approached my chemistry teacher and he said, sorry, it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so how do I get from a condensed structural formula down to a molecular formula? Well, this one's even easier, guys. If you can count, you can do a molecular formula. All you've got to do is start out with an element. How many is in it? So how many carbons? Well, there are two. How many hydrogens? There are six and that is a molecular formula. Okay, now a molecular formula tells me how many of each element I find inside it. Now here's the problem with a molecular formula. There's no indication of how they're joined to each other and that is a very big problem with organic chemistry because organic chemistry is exactly like molecular Lego. You can put together uh, two carbons and six hydrogens in quite a few ways and we call those isomers, and we're gonna deal with isomers as we go on. Now these ones are actually really difficult to rearrange because there's not actually that many ways that you can arrange two carbons and six hydrogens and still make a molecule that makes sense. So it's a bit of a challenge. Okay, now you might have noticed that this molecular formula has got this perfect ratio. What you can do is you can simplify that ratio just down to a ratio of the types of atoms that are inside, and that's what gets us the empirical formula. So if you notice very carefully over here, I've got two carbons and six hydrogens. That's exactly divisible by two, which is quite nice. So if I do divide it by two, I get CH3, and that is my empirical formula. Okay, now an empirical formula, unfortunately, is just a ratio, and it contains the least amount of information about my compound. But sometimes it's pretty interesting to find out what is the exact ratio of atoms inside this, because then I can work out percentage composition and uh, that's really nice. So, I mean, if you stay, uh, start taking a look on the side of nutritional stuff and you start reading on the outside of like a supplement bottle or a medicine, it tells you how much percentage of each particular thing you're getting, which is really quite cool. And that's where a molecular or an empirical formula really becomes quite handy. Okay, so Beauty has, has, has kind of like upped the stakes a little bit. So Beauty has asked us, what is a functional group? So let's get the terminology out of the way. Okay, so what is a functional group? Well, up until now, we've mostly been dealing with hydrocarbons. So hydrogen and carbon joined together make a hyd hydrocarbon. Now, hydrocarbons are everywhere. Everything which is made from oil and natural gas is a hydrocarbon. So the gas that you use to cook things with, the petrol in a car, diesel, uh, paraffin wax and some paints, uh, lubrication oils that go on inside engines and machinery, those are all hydrocarbons. However, organic molecules are pretty versatile. What you can do to an organic molecule is you can start to swap out the hydrogen. You can actually take hydrogen out and start putting th other things in. You can put in double bonds, triple bonds, you can put in other elements. That's the cool thing about carbon. Carbon can make friends with anybody. So, 
let me start talking to you about that. Okay, so now remember that carbon can make four bonds. Now usually what happens is we can put a hydrogen inside there. Now that's what happens on a normal hydrocarbon. So other functional groups replace this hydrogen or start to make carbon bond to other things, maybe even itself. So you can take out that hydrogen and start to put in other things. So for example, we can start to put on halogens like Cl. That's pretty awesome. So what we can do is we can put on something which is known as a chloro group, and that is a functional group. Now functional groups are things which can replace hydrogen and change the homologous series of a compound. So it actually changes the family that it belongs to. So for instance, uh, it, it completely swaps things out. So for instance, if I covered myself in fur, made myself slightly smaller, maybe I'm a chimpanzee now. Um, but I can completely change the, the nature of the compound by changing the elements that are inside it. So what I'm going to do is I can swap it out and make it a chloro. Uh, what else could I do? Um, I could swap it out and put OH. Now OH is a hydroxyl. Now a hydroxyl is a functional group which identifies the family of chemicals that is known as alcohols. You can get chloro, you can get hydroxyl, and you can even get what's known as alkyl groups, so other carbon chains. So, uh, for instance, if I put on another carbon chain which contains CH3, that is known as an alkyl group. So this particular one is called a methyl group because there's one carbon inside it. So it would be methane, but it's missing a hydrogen. So that's methyl. And uh, methyl is a very, very common functional group which is on the side. So anything which replaces hydrogen and changes a homologous group is called a functional group. Now, guys, what I advise is that please, 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 when you're studying for this section in your exam, don't sit with a long list, a table, and try and memorize them off by heart. It doesn't work. Uh, I've been teaching this section for like 15 years. It doesn't what work. What will work? How would okay. you suggest? So, the way to practice this properly and actually mm. to get this to go inside your brain a little bit better is actually just to practice naming with the table next year. Go back to the table constantly. And eventually what you'll figure out is that your brain wants shortcuts. <laughs> your brain doesn't want to look at a separate document to figure things out. So naturally, as you start to use the table again and again and again, you will find I mean, you do not have to memorize these. Now, I used to say make like flashcards and stuff like, guys, you're a little bit past flashcards. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you can memorize these things, but guys, it's not going to make sense unless you try and identify them on organic molecules. So whether or not it's chloro, bromo, iodo, fluoro, hydroxyl, methyl, carbo uh, carboxyl, or an ester. Um, guys, you've got to identify these by practicing example questions. That is the only real way to do it. So, with that in mind, let's just define the last few words before the ad break, and let's come back and see if you guys can figure some stuff out. Now, what I'm going to challenge you guys to do is to help each other on the Facebook page. Awesome. So, I'd like you guys to try and figure out which homologous series and which functional groups you need to know, because... I'm going to test you guys. Awesome. Okay. okay. It's going to be most like fun live test. You guys are going to actually have your smartphones or your tablets or your PCs. Anything with a browser will work. Okay. So before we go on that little ad break and get you guys joined up to the game show, right, let's get some of these definitions out of the way. Okay. So what is a homologous series? Wow. What a weird word. Homologous or homologous or however you put the emphasis on the syllable. Okay. So homologous series is a family or a group of compounds which all have the same functional group. So they all kind of look alike. They've all got like chloros, that makes them a haloalkane, or they've all got OHs, hydroxyls, which makes them alcohols, okay. or ketones, or esters, or... Guys, make a list in the Facebook group, make yourself some study notes, we're gonna test you soon. Mm. Okay, so now this next one is a little bit of a strange one. It says, what are the homologous series for hydrocarbons? So a homologous series, remember, was that family of compounds which all had the same functional group. Now hydrocarbons are only C and H, and how we join them together gives us functional groups. Okay, so the functional groups, these are double bonds, so we can get alkenes. So there we go, alkenes, which are C, double bond C, and we can also get alkynes. Now the really cool thing, if you were watching last week, enine, are alphabetically arranged. 
So they're one after each other. So one is triple bonds, one is double bonds, really nice and easy. Are there homologous series for other organic molecules? Absolutely. I think, uh, who was asking this question? I think it was Beauty. Uh, oh, this was one dealer. So one dealer, absolutely. There are other homologous series. Alcohols, esters, ketones, aldehydes. These are all homologous series. Even, uh, you can start to take a look at branched hydrocarbons, alkyl groups. Mm. Um, all of these are homologous series. So homologous series is like a family name for something. Okay. I and, have a question. Yes. Um, Bongi asks, what is the difference between aldehydes, because I heard you say, and ketones? Oh, nice one. Okay. So aldehydes and ketones are uh, homologous series exactly like this. Now, here's the difference. They both use what's known as a carbonyl. Now, the homologous series... If the carbonyl is joined at the end of the carbon chain, I have got an aldehyde. Mm -hmm. So an aldehyde is when I've got a carbonyl, and there's a carbonyl, C double bonded O is a carbonyl, that is an aldehyde. Now, the really cool thing about an aldehyde and a ketone is that the functional group is exactly the same, except it's found in a different place. So if I find it in the middle of the compound, I can call it a ketone. And for anyone that knows a little bit of Afrikaans or German, ketone <laughs> is a reference to ketan, which means a chain. Mm. So there's a little carbonyl in the middle of the chain. So that is a ketone. That's the only difference. It's where I find the carbonyl. So if the carbonyl is in the middle of the chain, it's a ketone. If okay. it's at the end, it's an aldehyde. And awesome. that's a good tip for one of our questions after the break. <laughs> but before we go away, guys, I need to show you how you can join. We are going to be posting it to the Facebook group. Yes. But for, the, for those of you that are not on Facebook, the URL is kahoot.it. So I'm just writing it out on the screen there, kahoot.it. And guys, here we go. Right, there's a pin on the screen, which is 610-440-04. Okay, so the pin is up at the top. John is going to be posting it up to the Facebook group, and we're going to be posting it as we go. Yeah. So Megan's going to be posting this. So 610-4404 is the game pin once you've joined. And I can see that Mac has already joined our game. So awesome. when we come back from the ad break, we're going to see who's so joined. so excited, Phil. Woo! Guys, please get joining. Please go on our Facebook. It's going to be posted in the next minute, okay? We'll see you after the ad break.